Magnetic resonance imaging is designed to provide clinicians with versatile diagnostic imaging and treatment planning capabilities. It is an imaging tool used in many hospitals and imaging centers. This powerful technology requires operators and other personnel working with it to be aware of the associated safety hazards and take precautions to reduce these risks. This video presents the safety hazards associated with the radio frequency field used to produce high-quality images of the body without using ionizing radiation. Topics in this video include an introduction to how RF is used to produce images, the potential hazards, and RF safety precautions to reduce the risks associated with the radio frequency field. Introduction to radio frequency. The MR system uses a powerful magnet to align the protons in the body. To image protons in the body, an RF signal is broadcast to a targeted area. A large RF transmit and receive coil, the RF body coil, is built into the scanner. The region of interest is placed in the center of the RF body coil, often together with a receive coil. The RF transmit coil broadcasts an RF signal at a given frequency. This is known as the resonance frequency. The targeted protons absorb the RF energy. These excited protons produce an RF signal which is picked up by the RF receive coil. The detected signal provides the data needed to create an image. The closer a receive coil is to the patient and the region of interest, the stronger the detected MR signal, enabling detailed studies. Potential hazards. During an MRI examination, RF energy is transferred to the body. This can potentially result in warming of the patient. The patient temperature rise is proportional to the total energy delivered to the patient. This is known as the specific energy dose, SED. SED is determined by SAR and scan time. SAR, specific absorption rate, is the RF power absorbed by the patient per unit mass expressed in watts per kilogram. International standards set limits to the level of SAR. SAR levels do not take into account the scan duration. SED is equal to SAR multiplied by scan time and is expressed in kilojoules per kilogram and provides an indication for warming of the patient. Both the SAR and the SED values are displayed for each scan. For SED, the scheduled, delivered, and total SED levels are displayed throughout the examination. On the MR console, the SED is displayed as both numerical values and as an overall SED status indicator. The SED status indicator is displayed in the exam dashboard. Scanning with high SAR levels, greater than 2 watts per kilogram, or scanning for a prolonged period of time, can warm up the patient, resulting in increased perspiration. Patient perspiration may result in the unintended RF circuits between body parts leading to burn injuries. Scan in normal operating mode, with whole body lower than SAR 2 watts per kilogram. When possible, the use of scans with high SAR levels should be minimized. But where this is needed, it is advisable that you distribute the SAR scans across the entire examination by interleaving the high SAR scans with lower SAR scans. Avoid running high SAR scans at the end of a high SED examination. To support the cool-down mechanism of the patient, set the patient ventilation at the maximum level when scanning high SAR sequences that are greater than 2 watts per kilogram. It should be noted that the thermal load and the associated patient temperature rise of an MR examination is a separate phenomenon from local RF energy-related thermal injuries or burns. The transmitted RF field results in the induction of the electrical currents in the body. These currents flow through the electrically conductive tissue of the human body, resulting in heat dissipation. The transmitted RF energy and the associated heat dissipation is a potential hazard for all patients. Heating sensations and tissue heating can occur if the patient's body cannot effectively dissipate the generated heat. The risk of RF energy-related injuries is higher in patients with impaired thermoregulation, such as neonates, elderly, 
sedated, hypertensive, and obese patients. Conditions that may impair thermoregulation include diabetes, certain types of cancer, cardiovascular impairment, or certain drug regimes such as diuretics, tranquilizers, or vasodilators. Other risk factors for thermal injuries include patients with fever, who are pregnant, who have extensive dark tattoos, including permanent makeup, who are unable to sense or communicate adverse events, such as unconscious, sedated, anesthetized, paralyzed, pediatric, or confused patients, and patients who are thermally insulated, for example, due to a plaster or a fiberglass cast. Patient screening is vital to determine specific risk factors and take the necessary precautions. Increased examination room temperature and humidity hinder the body's ability to dissipate excess heat. Likewise, thick clothing, clothing made of synthetic fibers, and blankets hinder heat dissipation. Unobstructed airflow supports the cool-down mechanism of patients. Precautions are needed to minimize thermal load and avoid the occurrence of thermal injuries, such as local skin reddening or blisters. Local tissue heating can occur at places where cables or body parts connect in a manner that resonant induction loops are created. These RF loops may act as unwanted RF antennas. The electrical resistance is high if the area where the RF loop closes is small. Heat is then generated and may result in burns. The unwanted antenna effect caused by skin-to-skin -skin contact is a particular risk if the patient is sweating. Moist skin has an increased burn risk as sweat lowers skin resistance. To prevent skin-to-skin -skin RF heating incidents, avoid direct and near contact between skin surfaces. You can do this by ensuring there is space between body parts or by placing an insulator between the body parts. Electronic RF filtering is applied to cables and other components of RF receive coils to prevent them from becoming unwanted antennas. Cable loops must be avoided, and cables must not cross each other or other electrically conductive objects. There should be a layer of insulation between the patient and the coil cable. Over the course of time, RF coils are subject to wear and tear. Never use damaged RF coils. Local heating can also occur when the patient is in contact with the bore wall. When contact with the bore wall cannot be prevented, position the Philips MR padding between the body and the bore wall. RF safety precautions. Although MRI is designed to be a safe diagnostic and treatment planning modality, there are some potential hazards for which precautions must be taken. Patient screening remains a vital safety precaution Advise patients to wear light 100% cotton or linen clothing during the MRI examination, or provide suitable garments. RF loops should be avoided by ensuring distance between body parts, body parts and coil cables, body parts and the bore wall of the magnet. When contact cannot be prevented, position padding to prevent RF loops. Minimize the SED. Scan in normal operating mode with whole body SAR lower than 2 watts per kilogram. When possible, minimize the use of high SAR scans. Avoid high SAR scans at the end of a high SED examination. Keep the total scan time as short as possible. Use the patient ventilation for patient comfort and cool down. Ensure that airflow in the board is not obstructed. Set the maximum level of patient ventilation for scans with high SAR. This video highlights some of the essential guidelines for maintaining a safe MRI environment. In addition to this, you must read and understand the safety chapter of the instructions for use. If issues are not clear, please contact your local physicist or application specialist. Provided that the appropriate safety precautions as presented in the instructions for use are observed and the system is operated by qualified and trained personnel, MRI is a safe modality, producing images of outstanding clinical value.